Welcome back to Income Trading 101. Today is February the 9th, 2021. I wanted to take a quick look at Kinder Morgan. We've seen some action uh, in the energy business. It's obviously been a busy year, and this is uh, one of the largest um, uh, asset uh holders in the country when it comes to the energy business from pipelines terminals uh very important to the energy market so just pulling it all the way back it looks like march of 2011 once again just get a sense of where we are where we've been and i'm going to go ahead just in advance you guys see me do this every time and preemptively get rid of the volume uh buttons because i'm not going to use uh that information and we can see the big sell-off that happened in 2015. That was tied directly to uh, the falling price of the uh, of the oil markets. So we're just going to go ahead and pull this back. I kind of feel like from 2016 forward, it's a true look at the oil market because 2015 was a bit of a reset when uh, we saw Saudi Arabia and several other OPEC nations release a lot more oil in an, in an attempt to get rid of uh, the U.S. Uh, fracking, uh, oil fracking industry. So uh, looking at it since 2016, this has obviously been a volatile stock. Um, this period back here, this gap is obviously due to, um, this was the uh, global pandemic coronavirus. But one of the interesting things that happened uh, was that when people started working at home, they consumed less fuel, less gasoline. Now, they consume more power, but Kinder Morgan specifically is tied to the petroleum uh, petroleum framework. That's where they are best known. Um, that can mean oil, that can mean uh, naphtha, gasoline, that can mean jet oil, jet fuel, even fuel oil that fuels tankers and whatnot. But uh, either way, it's tied to that end of the industry, not power and natural gas. So Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this stock. And I, you know, I'm actually going to, I'll come back to the expanded view. For now, let's go ahead and just get a one year look at this. So we'll go February to February. We're going to toss in a couple of moving averages, or actually, three. One, two, three. Going to go up here. We have to tweak them and make them usable for what we're looking for. So um, it requires changing colors. I like to change colors. My shorter term, my 10 day is going to be my buy signal. My midterm is the 20. That's my sell signal. And then I like having a 60 day as a or 60 period. So we might go beyond the day uh, data. Uh, just to give me a better sense of what's going on. And, you know, maybe it's cheating, but I'm going to go ahead and move past the global pandemic uh, as well, just to get a better sense. So we can see there are times, there have been times when the uh, short term crossed above the lower, uh, the, the mid range. So that's the 10 day above the 20 gives us a good indication of when to buy. A sell might happen at this crossover between the green and the red line. That and that's the that's the ten year falling below the twenty. Or you might actually wait for all three uh, for all three indicators to be in line, which would have been closer back here to uh, July tenth. You would have lost a little money early on, but then uh, you know we, you would have caught this big downward move from a high of 15 bucks all the way down to a low of about $11.50. So not bad, not bad movement for a stock of this nature. I mean, this thing pays a dividend, right? Look at this, 26 cents a quarter. That is a huge dividend, right? You're getting, so you have a, you had a chance back here to buy an $11 stock that's kicking off a 10% return and dividend income annually. How crazy is that? Um, I don't currently own this stock, but now that I look at it, uh, look at this dividend, it's been here for quite a while. This is one of the things I like about TradingView is it lets me go back and get this information, 25 cent dividend. Wow, this is amazing. 
if you're telling me you can get almost a full 10% return off of this, and even with the stock trading, let's say the stock goes back to $16, that $1 a year of income is, it's huge. It's huge, you know? That's what, about, about uh, just shy of 8% a year? Less than that, I did the math wrong. Either way, <laughs> that's still an amazing dividend uh, on uh, dividend yield. So, and this is a company. This company isn't necessarily, you know, trading oil, even though they are highly correlated. Maybe we'll take a look at that at the end of this video. But um, wow, I'm gonna have to come back to this. So, anyway, let's let's uh, switch up some of the time frames just to see if we. Uh, can see anything else using just the moving averages. I'm not going to do the one month because it's really going to take us back into the past where we get the uh, both the, the oil crisis in late 15 and the global pandemic. So I'm going to shorten the time frame up to one hour. Be sort of an ultra short uh, level. And you can see even when trading the one hour charts uh, over multiple days, moving averages um, and, and waiting, you know, waiting for a crossover and then waiting for all three moving averages to be in line. So the 10 year or 10, 10 period to be above the 20 and the 60 can actually play out well as a trading strategy, uh, st tragedy strategy in this, in this stock. So, uh, definitely worth, uh, taking a look at and tweaking for your own, uh, results. But I like, I don't like when um, when the averages are so close to price that they're interchanging. So I tend to prefer to exit when when the when the when the price is really hanging out and crossing above or below my moving averages. But you have to figure out what works best for you. And you have back over here. Uh, what would this have been on January twenty seventh? Once again, all three uh, moving averages got in in line to head lower so again you could have caught a better in fact i like the look of this on the one hour chart better than i like even the um the one day chart let's look at a 15 minute 15 minutes uh, 15 period 15 minute period so um you're gonna get whipped ripped around uh, uh, whipped around quite a bit more uh which is to be expected when you're talking about shorter time frames um, you're looking for bigger burst, um, bigger burst in the uh, in the in the stock uh, up or down. And then we're gonna look. That's actually it. I'm gonna take it back. I, I, I liked this one hour, so let's stick with the one hour for a second. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and look at the MACD, which is sort of a, a, a mix of these moving averages as well as a as well as a uh, there's a momentum oscillator tied to it uh, to give us a little more information so let's so this is 2021 so far I like that um, it's not it doesn't appear to be as volatile this is actually one of the more useful ones that we've seen um, you had a pretty clean cross uh, back here on January the 15th a clean crossover above the zero line so that's great uh, a great indication for a sell and it crossed back over here on February the uh, February 1st um, underneath so this would be the oversold region I mean this this MACD is actually a very that's a very tradable signal of course it can uh, appear that way right off the bat but um, definitely worth playing around with a little bit more I will go ahead and expand this back out to the one day just to get a better sense of how this signal has reacted over over time. So um, I think I've mentioned before that I don't like the MACD using the MACD in periods of sideways markets. I don't think it adds enough value. Um, obviously went lower here with the global pandemic and came on back up. And it's sort of just been on the one day I don't think this has been as useful as useful as those one hour charts. So we'll kick back out to that. And also, I'd like to just get a better sense. I'm just going to take a look at this one hour. Um, we have been trending higher, 
even though we're not as high as this stock has been in the past, we're still trending up. And I'm I'm kind of interested in seeing if it's even worth uh, taking a look at Fibonacci, uh, if there are any uh, visible retracements that are worthwhile. So we will just, just to see if there's anything here. I'd like to do a Fibonacci analysis, um, Fibonacci retracement from, uh, recall, we're going to call it uh, June, the June high, all the way over to the November uh, 2020. I'm going to bring that on across just to just to see if I think this is still recovering or if it's playing off of this same analysis. So look at that top to bottom, bottom being closer to 1150, top being around 1785, just shy of $18. Um, we've had a retracement of more than 50% before a pullback and then it hit actually the 61.5%. Uh, and, you know, every now and then when we do these, we are able to see repeating, you know, common themes. So I definitely think there's some interesting action, maybe order sitting around that uh, $14.70 range, the 50 cents range. Um, just looking at how, you know, this played a little bit of support here. All, tried to play support here. Definitely played some resistance here at this little triple top uh, mid range. And then once again, you can tell the way stock hung close to it. That's a, a, a region of importance. And we are right back there now. So um, it, this stock appears to be making uh, some new, some new, uh, it's trending higher. At least that's that's what I'm seeing uh, in the graphs or in the charts. I'm going to, the last thing I'm going to do, I like to draw uh, channels just to get a sense to if I'm, if I'm able to easily draw them, then chances are they were real. Um, like that one there. So let's, uh, let's do one more. See, I would go straight across, but really that's not useful. Um, like this channel. Trying to do something along these lines just isn't useful. Not not really. Um, I think given where this stock is, it's more likely to have a tighter, a tighter channel like it did on this down move than to truly have a huge channel. I wouldn't put both of these peaks the, this peak from December and this peak in January in the same in the same channel. I think they should be analyzed individually if you're going to do that. Um, let's take it out. Let's move it on out to the one day. All right. So maybe when we look at it from the no, nah, still looks like a little bit too much to put into one uh, one single channel. So. Um, Lots of interesting things happening in this stock from a technical standpoint. Um, i sorry to get so much go off on the fundamentals, but man, that dividend yield got me excited. Um, hopefully it makes you excited too. If it doesn't, maybe you're new to investing and you don't understand, but that's huge. So anyway, I'm going to have to do some more research on that because that might be worth buying and holding in the, holding in the account just so I could pick up some extra, um, you know, passive income. You guys want passive income? You have to hold, one of the ways to do it is to hold some stock that kicks off a dividend each quarter or annually so that you can be making money while you sleep. That is it for today. Uh, hopefully you guys like this analysis. Um, like I said, the dividend, the dividend yield on this stock is crazy. That's crazy. And I do think this stock could head higher. It seems like it is right now. So from where it is right now, I would expect it to actually uh, go higher than $16 a share simply because it seems to be wanting to make new um, new peaks with each uh, kind of wave of what's going on 
right now. So that's it. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already done it, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we make these videos every day. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.